Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to this video. And today's video is another in my webinar questions answered series. And today I'm going to answer another video from the Vertical Dimension Case Studies webinar. And this webinar is from Dr. Ho, who would like to know, were the feldspathic veneers reinforced by the underlying enamel for the lower anterior teeth? And this is probably case one or case two. I believe this is from case one, this question. And I would say yes, this is a principle that I have with porcelain veneer cases is that I like to have my porcelain veneers bonded onto enamel wherever possible. Um, because I believe that this will give us the best long-term bond strength for the cases. It'll also leave the tooth with the best strength of remaining tooth preparation. Um, there are some cases where we have enamel worn away from erosion, etc., or just tooth wear, and we have to bond our porcelain restorations, whether it be veneers or overlays or onlays or occlusal veneers, to dentin. If that's the case, I'd recommend considering immediate dentin sealing which has been advocated by a number of authors and teachers, most notably probably Dr. Pascal Monnier, who is going to do a seminar for my occlusion design members in 2020 that will teach immediate dent and sealing in high detail. But this particular case, if you look at the before picture and then the prep photo, this case had mostly enamel left to bond to. There was very little dentin exposed. So this was a great case to bond directly to enamel, which is my preferred technique for porcelain restorations. And asking about these being feldspathic porcelain veneers reinforced, you know, that maybe makes me think the perception that these porcelain veneers are weaker in feldspathic. And you know, they're, they're really strong in feldspathic if they're bonded to enamel. I'll tell you that. This case is like 15 years old almost. And if you look, I've got some long-term before and after of the posterior teeth, which were onlays or occlusal veneers that were bonded directly to uh, enamel and dentin. And they're just 1.5 millimeter thick occlusal porcelain in uh, feldspathic. Now, that can be very strong with proper occlusal design, um, force management, and bonding technique, as well as layering the porcelain properly. This case was completed by uh, Harold Heindel, who's incredibly, uh, incredibly talented with feldspathic porcelain, which is an old school technique. Um, today, I maybe would do the posteriors with Emacs, just because I'm tending to go with more monolithic restorations in the posterior, but the anterior I would still do with feldspathic porcelain because I feel that that's, and this is backed up by looking at cases for 20 years, I feel that that gives us the best aesthetic results with, you know, the right ceramist building the feldspathic porcelain. In the posterior, I'm not as critically concerned with aesthetics. Um, you know, we want nice aesthetics, but I also want exceptional strength. So yes, layered, um, sorry, um, milled or uh, even pressed monolithic Emacs is very strong. So we tend to go monolithic in the posterior. I don't do bonded onlays in monolithic zirconia. I'm not sure about the bond strength to zirconia. I prefer to do my bonded posterior restorations in Emacs these days. Although seeing this case, I wouldn't be totally afraid to do it in feldspathic with proper occlusal design and force management, but I tend to do them in bonded Emacs, and I tend to manage crowns in the posterior and first and second molars more in monolithic zirconia that's cemented. So if the retention form is decent, I'll go with monolithic cemented zirconia, or I'll just go with gold. I still like using gold restorations. I tend not to do a lot of layered ceramics in the back molars these days, unless it were to be something like a bonded feldspathic onlay. So that hopefully gives you some insight into different porcelain bonding ideas. Um, if you're interested in seeing these cases, you can attend this webinar. The best, easiest URL to remember is videoseminar.com. So if you'd like to attend this webinar while it's still available, just go to videoseminar.com, register, and we'll talk to you then. Take care. Bye.